Hello again, Card Muni. It's RJ back with another video. Let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day is the 1989 KB Superstars of Baseball card of Mike Schmidt. If you were with us back on Wednesday, I showed off the 1988 KB box set. This is the 1989 set that still had Mike as a player. There's your checklist. That came on the back of the box. Um, not a big fan of this particular set. I think the color schemes are just flat out awful. Um, you got the pink on the front. And you got this yellow and brown mustard looking thing on the back. So I, I, I've never been a big fan of this particular set. I mean, it's the way it looks. But I'm 100% a fan of the set as part of a box set collection that I have. These are some of the star players that existed in, back in 1988. Uh, the set came out in 89, so obviously the people, it's Andres Galarraga still on the Expos. It's um, highlighting the stars of the day. Clearly that you had to choose the ones from 80, um, 88 because 89 hadn't even happened yet when the set was available for purchase. Mark McGuire made the cut by then. So these are the people who were your stars of baseball back in 88 according to uh tops and kb who put this set out so there you have it my random mike schmidt item of the day today's random baseball collectible of the day I have here a souvenir baseball from the phillies 2008 world series championship it's got the little logo on the back most of the side panels simply have facsimile signatures of the team and it was a Sports Illustrated release because uh, back in the 90s and uh, 2000s, um, what happened was um, Sports Illustrated, would, in order to get a lot of people to subscribe, at the end of all the championships, whether it's NBA, and you know, NHL, you know, hockey, basketball, football, what have you, they would. Um, try and get people to subscribe by offering these collectibles. You know, for a one-year subscription, they give you a collectible about the championship team. Well, in 2008, I bit the bullet, and, you know, I went ahead and purchased a subscription to Sports Illustrated so I could get all of those numerous collectibles they were offering up uh, for the Phillies World Championship. So I got the ball, I got a special commemorative book, and a couple other uh, random knickknacks, I think, so... I was happy to have that. Still have it in my collection today. We're going to skip the trivia question today. We will get to it. Uh, you can see the card in the back. We'll talk about that in a second. So, what I want to show off today is a, a subset. A uh, little known, little cared about subset of cards from this year's... Uh, well, I should say, yeah, it was this year's. It was 2021. This was the opening day set, and it's a set of 10 cards. One, two, three. Let me do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you have it. So there are 10 cards in the set. And what it's highlighting is outstanding opening day performances. Now, the reason I want to highlight this is because a lot of times we'll look at these cards and we'll say, oh, gee, that's... It's not, a, it's not a rarity, it's not a parallel, it's not a numbered card, it doesn't mean anything, we throw it, in, we throw it away. And most people don't even care about these cards. Even I rarely care about these cards because as a set collector, these are random inserts and it's difficult sometimes to get all of them. Uh, but every once in a while, these little inexpensive sets I'll put on the trading card, trading card database that I'm trying to get them all. And I was able to get all 10 of these cards as a set. What I want to do is go through the 10 of them with you and, and let's look at them and find out why did this guy, whoever he may be, have an outstanding opening day? What did he do that warranted his inclusion in this subset? So let's take a look, shall we? Yvonne Rodriguez, outstanding opening day in 2000. What happened on 2000? So coming off his AL MVP season of 1999, Rodriguez kept the good vibes going on 2000 opening day. The Ranger... The Rangers catcher clubbed a three-run homer in the third inning and a two-run shot in the fifth. Yvonne also drew an eight-pitch walk 
during his five RBI performance to drive a 10-4 win over the White Sox. So on opening day in 2000, Ivan Rodriguez had quite the day, two home runs, and worked the pitcher for an eight-pitch walk. He had five, so that would be half of the team's run on that, the RBIs on that day. Quite the outstanding performance on opening day for Mr. Rodriguez. Albert Pujols had a great opening day on 2010. What did he do? Let's take a look. The two-time defending NL MVP award winner Pujols showed no signs of slowing down on 2010 opening day. He bludgeoned Reds pitchers for four hits and five trips to the plate, including a solo homer in the first inning and a two-run shot in the seventh. Albert also scored four runs in the 11-6 Cardinals run. So a four for five day for Mr. Pujols on opening day. Not bad in 2010. Javi Baez in 2019. There you go. All right, so when the Cubs opened 2019 with an interleague play game at Texas, Baez carried the day for the visitors. His solo homer in the fourth inning began his team's recovery from a 2-0 deficit. One frame later, Javier unloaded a three-run shot to cap a victory, cap a six-run uprising. Chicago breezed to a 12-4 victory. So he had quite the day on his opening day in 2019, Mr. Javier Baez. Bryce Harper, opening day of 2013. The only player to hit five opening day home runs before the age of 25. Hint, people, I might use that as a trivia question since it's available to find and not so difficult. The only player to hit five opening day home runs before the age of 25. Harper hoisted the first two of those during the 2013 lid lifter at Nationals Park. The pitching dominated game breezed by in just two hours and ten minutes, but Bryce cracked solo shots in the first and fourth to down Miami. That's pretty impressive when you're the only guy to score runs, and they're both by solo home runs, and that's the entire game, essentially. That's not too bad. I'm going to skip Giancarlo Stanton for a second. That off to the side there. Bob Feller. Um, Bob Feller, I think most people, if you know your history, know what he did on opening day in 1940. In 1940, Feller twirled the first opening day no-hitter in history. The right-hander was only 21 when he shackled the White Sox, striking out eight while leading the Indians to a one to nothing victory. It was the first of three shutouts Bob fired in seven lid lifters, including a two-hitter and a three-hitter. There you go. All right, so Billy Williams, 1971. What did Mr. Williams do? The Cubs opened their 1971 season against the rival Cardinals at Wrigley Field on, opening, on April 6th with Fergie Jenkins and Bob Gibson waging an intense battle. With one out and the bases empty, in the bottom of the 10th inning, Williams squared up a hoot offering and hit it out to supply Chicago with a 2-1 to triumph. So, Billy Williams hit a walk-off home run back in 1971 off Bob Gibson. Quite the feat there. Mark McGuire, 1998. The 1998 campaign featured McGuire's initial opening day with the Cardinals, and Big Mac put on a show for the sellout crowd at Bush Stadium. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Mark broke open a scoreless game with a grand slam, his first of 70 home runs that year. St. Louis defeated the Dodgers. That's a cool little tidbit there. Mark McGuire, we all know he hit 70 home runs in 98, but his first home run was a grand slam on opening day. That's a neat little trivia tidbit right there, people. All right, 2013, Clayton Kershaw. We had 2013 uh, Bryce Harper a moment ago. 
Opening the 2013 season against the rival Giants on April 1st, Kershaw took the first step towards his second NL Cy Young Award. The Dodger Southpaw needed only 94 pitches to twirl a four-hit shutout, leading his team to a 4 to nothing victory. Clayton struck out seven and walked none while facing just 30 batters. So, quite the efficient um, game by Clayton Kershaw, only facing 30 batters and a 4 nothing victory on opening day. Uh, 94 pitches, not too bad. That's a quite an opening day thing. And then this one here, if you're a history buff of baseball like I am, you know why Hank Aaron is here in 1974. Why is he here? Aaron ripped 19 career hits on opening day games, including three in 1959, but none was more satisfying than the one that came on his first swing of the 1974 campaign on April 4th in Cincinnati. After waiting all offseason to resume his pursuit of Babe Ruth, Hank cracked home run number four, 714 to tie the Bambino's record. That's right. First game of the season, 1974. His first swing, boom, there went number 714. That is why Hank Aaron is here. So, all right. The issue before us now is the Clayton Kershaw, not Clayton Kershaw, excuse me, Giancarlo Stanton in the background there. I'm going to zoom in for you there. So why is Stanton on opening day? And why, what's the trivia question? So here we go. The um, This is on the back of this card. So I want you to tell me, you've got to find a picture of the back of this card. Shouldn't be too hard for you to do. All right. He hit two tape measure home runs according to the back of this card i want you to tell me the distance of both of those tape measure home runs if you can tell me the distance of both of those tape measure home runs i will send you that card the opening day gene carlo stanton card on the back like i said if you can find a picture of the back of the card let me go back to where it was on the back, you will find listed the, the length of both home runs. So be the first person to email me with those those lengths. How far did each home run go based upon the information on the back of that card? On opening day, back in, what was it? 2018. Find this card. You'll find a back of it somewhere. What were the lengths of those home runs? Be the first person to email me with the correct answer. The email's in the description below, along with a repeat of the question, and I'll send you that card. So thanks for watching. Please consider like, subscribing, all that jazz. See you again soon. Take care.